Tony here, watching the ups and downs of Trucker Josh, Poison Oak and all. Have a good day. Just getting our butt into gear. Tell me it's a Thursday. And we're off to St. Paul, Minnesota. We're in, uh, oh, what's this town called again? We're just pretty much west of the Minnesota border on I-94 on a quick trip. Spent the night here. And now we're gonna roll into St. Paul, pick up another piece of freight, another little utility trailer, uh, some kind of security surveillance trailer. Tie that down and then make our way down to uh, Nicolette area, Minnesota, which is just a couple of hours southwest. And wait till 8 a.m. tomorrow morning to load my last piece. A little icing on my cake, throw a little bit of extra freight on me. I got room on the trailer, and I got space weight-wise. Why not, right? Load me up. So that means we'll load tomorrow morning and uh, be home tomorrow evening. So that'll be Friday evening till Tuesday. I wanna get uh, mud flap brackets like this guy has here. See, they got the, the three stop light and signal lights right integrated into it. <coughs> Just doing some shopping around right now to find the best price. One of mine is getting a little bent up and it doesn't look very nice anymore, so I want to fix that. Put something that looks nice on there, you know? I know it's a Volvo and it's nothing to brag about. I mean, I drive a giant minivan, I understand. It's not, it's not a big old fancy truck that I'll take to truck shows, but it, it does the job. It's a tool. But I still want it to look nice, you know? As nice as you as nice as you can make a Volvo look without it being tacky, you know? It's gotta stay classy. Again, as classy as you can get with a Volvo. <laughs> I want a Kenworth. My next truck is gonna be a Kenworth W900. Take the entrance to the ride on I-94 West. Thanks, Karen. I've already decided whenever I, uh, well, in the next couple of years, I wanna get another truck. I'm gonna keep this truck and uh, hire someone to drive it for me. And I wanna get into a Kenworth W9. And then I wanna pay that truck off and get another, maybe two trucks, hire some drivers to drive those for me. That's the plan, but for now we're just trying to get one more truck. That's the, that's the goal. So I gotta get everything in order and trucks aren't cheap, tell you what. I would go for used, I'm not going to go for brand new, because brand new, they're like... You spend $150,000 on a brand new truck easily. It's 3000 anywhere between three to $5,000 a month payments. So I'll get a lightly used one, maybe a little warranty left on the engine, maybe not. I want all the maintenance records on it, you know. I want to make sure that it's a good truck, that it's not a lemon. And yeah, uh, very specific desires though for my next truck. I want a Kenworth W900. The longest wheelbase I'm allowed in Canada currently, I believe is 280 inches. Correct me if I'm wrong, my fellow Canadians. It used to be 244 inches uh, from the center of the, of the steer tires, the steer axle to the center of the rear axle. They extended that recently to, I think it was 285 or 280, somewhere in there. So I want this, the longest wheelbase I can legally have in Canada. And I want a, a studio sleeper, which is an 86 inch sleeper on the truck with the bed that folds up into a couch. I want it to be manual, 18 speed if possible. I mean, I'd settle for a 13 speed, I'm not 
too picky with that, but I want an 18 speed if I can. But that's not a make it or break it deal. If it's got a 13 speed, okay, as long as it's manual transmission. And uh, yeah, from there on, whether it has chrome on it already or not, all kinds of accessories, that's neither here nor there because it's gonna. I wanna make that thing shiny. We'll see. Uh, I'm hoping that, well, really hoping that that less than five years I can have that truck. But uh, between you and me, I hope it's going to be less than that. I'm not shopping around right now, though. So, I mean, if you're a truck salesman, don't waste your time right now. But maybe keep me in mind for the future. I'll let you know when I'm looking. And it uh, doesn't matter how far I got to go for it. As long as I get a good deal on it. I mean, whoever wants to sell me the truck I want for the least amount of money, as long as it's a good shape. Sometimes you get what you pay for though, so sometimes, I don't know, I don't know, you know what I mean. Truck shopping is exciting. I've never actually gone official truck shopping. I bought this truck, uh, it was a fleet truck, right? Now I bought it to get the ball rolling. I had my Freightliner before, I had a little bit of bad luck towards the end of its life with the transmission. So I had to park that one. I went back to being a company driver and uh, you know got a few things in order and then bought this truck. So uh, that's the story. This is supposed to be a stepping stone to get to the next step. The Freightliner was supposed to be that too. But, uh, you know, back then, I, my life was a little different. I could have used it a little bit better and used my money a little bit better to get up to, so that at this point now, I might have had three trucks. But, you know, I was learning. It was my first truck. Learning what works and what doesn't. And, you know, I'm lucky I have my dad, who's been an owner-operator most of my life, that I can get advice from firsthand. And, uh, you know, different things work at different times for different people. But I'm not going to give up this time. I want that Kenworth W900. Just crossed the line into Minnesota and they welcome me with an open scale. That's no way to say hello. So this is one of those scales uh, where you drive over the preliminary scale out here and then it'll tell you whether or not they want to take a closer look at you or not. They're watching you on the cameras and stuff too so if they see anything on your load, if you have like a burnt out headlight or a burnt out tail light or something and they notice it on the cameras, they'll pull you in. Or if they don't like the way you tied down your load. These guys always drive over this too slow though. The speed limit is 25 mile an hour through here. A lot of people think that means 25 kilometers an hour. See, he's getting pulled in. Watch these lights above us here. Aha! How'd you know that, Karen? Well, you think? Okay, so I got the bypass, but that guy over there, they wanna see. So I don't know, maybe he's really heavy. He only has a single axle on his truck, so maybe he's got too much weight. Karen, it's too early for all this talking. You'll learn. I don't like talking lots in the morning. And that's that. That was the way scale. I rarely ever get pulled into this one here. Continue on this road for 13 kilometers. Uh, 31 kilometers or about 20 miles to where we're picking up this little trailer. Should be pretty easy to tie down. I'm guessing two chains. There you go. So I'm here at the dock. They're going to be loading me up with a little trailer at the back. One of these things. It's like a mobile video surveillance trailer. Look at this thing. Just this little trailer here, worth $65,000. Isn't that crazy? US dollars. 
I don't know if it's like, I think these are all the same here, right? I mean, like it all folds down and they'll put it on the back of my trailer there, but. Better be careful with it. There we go. This thing only weighs about 2,500 pounds. It's not that heavy. We're ready to rock and roll. Let's do it. Got one more pickup before we can go home. Honestly, I would have liked to have used chains on that little thing at the back, but like I said, it's only 2,500 pounds and both those straps are good for uh, 5,400 pounds. Got strap protectors on it all and uh, they said here they want absolutely no chains on their equipment because it damages it. And these trailers aren't, like the trailer I'm hauling, a little guy isn't designed for chains. There's no hooks for chains anywhere. You'd have to wrap it like right over it or around it, right over the paint with the chain, right? And, so I checked into it and everything checked out and that's what they want me to do and that's what I'm supposed to do, so. I'm not worried about it, it'll hold. I'll just rather have chains on it. But I put it in such a way that I'm not worried about it. It's just a preference. I like to go big or go home. I like to over secure. It is already way over secured, don't get me wrong, but you know what I mean. We're gonna go down to Moncato or Moncato, I think that's what it's called. Moncato, Minnesota. They're, they got a quick trip truck stop there. Now we're gonna stay the night there. And the afternoon and evening. We're gonna go hang out there for a bit. Apparently it's a really nice truck stop. Not too much parking though. So we don't wanna take our time too much getting there. We gotta make sure we get a spot. It fills up quickly in the evening, I'm sure. Now this is Moncato or Moncato, Moncato I think. Moncato, Minnesota. Just a little ways. Oh, no, no. No, this is St. Peter's, Minnesota. Volcano's coming. That's right. Speed limit reduced ahead. Thanks, Karen. One thing I like about her is that she, uh, well, I can connect her directly to my, like, I can tether her to my phone internet, right? So she gets regular updates. She knows where, where all the speed limit zones are. She'll warn me if, uh, when there's a speed zone coming up like this. Really handy. I mean, don't trust that 100% all the time, but it is really handy to have that. Well, this must be downtown St. Peter's. That's a yellow light. That's a yellow light. Okay. Woo. Easy. All right. Oh, this looks like a typical small town in America. I love these main streets of all the small towns. You know, it's sort of like they haven't changed in a couple centuries. Unlike the big cities, you know, where they keep knocking everything down and building new stuff on top of it all the time. It's kind of nice to see these small communities still, you know, surviving and thriving too. It's easier for them to survive and thrive here in the U.S. because of, there's, there's so many people everywhere, you know? It's, everything's developed from, you know, border to border, from ocean to ocean, for the most part, you know? You can go into some wilderness areas in the U.S., but start walking in any random direction. Eventually, you'll hit civilization. It's, just, it's all mainly developed, either for agriculture, and you know, out west it's been developed into uh, cattle ranches and stuff. And in Canada, you know, you get dropped in the middle of the forest up there. You know, if you start walking in the wrong wrong direction, you'll never see civilization again. <laughs> you'll end up at the North Pole. I mean, you might eventually find some civilization up there, but chances are, if you walk in the wrong direction, you're never going to see people again. You'll die before you find something. It's not so much the case here, especially in like this area, like Minnesota. There's a lot of forested areas up in northern Minnesota, but you know, pick a direction, any direction, and walk in less than a day, you'll find something. But with that being said, that's what I mean. These small towns, they got so many people all around them, whereas in Canada, the small towns, the further north you go, the less people there are to buy the products and all the businesses, right? 
So the towns don't always grow and thrive like they do here. Oh, look at these flags. What's this? The war memorial, I guess? Yeah. America. Yeah, City of St. Peter. That's what that sign said. Beautiful little town. Very well kept. Very, very nice. Any of you from around here? I know I got a lot of subscribers from Minnesota. So we're continuing this a little bit the next day yet till we go and get to our next customer at least. Checking all the freight that is still here. I've already checked all the chains and I'm just walking around again for your benefit. So here's this new trailer. I've added some more securement on here. Like I said, I like to go overboard. As I've tongue wrapped the tongue here right, tongue wrapped the tongue of uh, what it does is the strap was around the tongue and I pull it tight here and I also pull it tight here so what that does is it first off holds this thing down but most of all it holds it from moving this way or that way this thing is stuck right here now and then I put this one over here as tight as I could, just as an extra precaution, again, to make sure that this doesn't vibrate or bounce and that it stays firmly on the dunnage here. And then I've got another strap in there with strap protection, holding the whole unit from moving back. And I got another one on the back there, holding the unit from moving this way as well. Now, like I said before, yesterday for me, uh, I wanted to use chains on this, but they said absolutely not. Absolutely not. And I called in and I checked out and checked everything out and they said, yep, this is the way to do it. So that's the way I did it. But I did add these on here now because now I know for sure that that tongue is not going to move around whatsoever. It's going to stay planted right there. So I've got to end it here. I got to go pick up my last piece. It's going to go up here on the step. It's a few pallets of some kind of aluminum, I think for boats. I'm not too sure we'll find out. I'm just like 15 minutes down the road and we'll pick it up right away. I'm gonna include that in tomorrow's vlog. Gotta to end today's vlog somewhere, so. Got a pretty good load. It's actually three loads in one, three LTL, which means less than truck load. Which in the end, if you can get a full load like this, you actually make more money than if it was just one full load. I'm okay with that. So we'll see you later everybody. See you in tomorrow's video. It'll start right here. So don't forget to tune in, subscribe, like, and share my videos. It helps me out a whole lot because YouTube doesn't always recommend my videos as much as they used to. Uh, I'm not hit as hard as people doing like commentary on real world events, but the YouTube algorithms, they keep changing. And the best way for my videos to get out there to new people and in front of new eyes is if you share. So if you do share it, I really do appreciate it. Thanks, and I'll see you tomorrow. Say bye, Diesel. You were not. You were not doing what I think you were doing in the background there, bombing me. I'm going to have to cut that out now. I'm sorry. Don't feel bad, Diesel. It's now. So you got to have a bath sometime. No, you didn't do anything wrong. It's okay. Come here. Come here. No, don't come here and lick me right now. Never mind. Bad idea. It's okay. Just don't worry about it. Hi, I am Eric. I'm from a northern small town uh, called Luleå in Sweden and uh, you're watching <laughs> Trucker Josh vlogs on YouTube.